And they used the invasion which they had told him they would not intervene with so that George Bush Sr. would have an excuse to invade him. Saddam was a little too strong for them. George Bush Sr. didn't get elected again. He had to wait eight years. His son got in. He had to finish the job. Surprising. Jot this statement down, if you will, please. The standard currency of the world is oil. Whatever oil is denominated in will determine what the standard currency of the world is. The Federal Reserve note is nothing but a piece of paper. It is not the standard currency of the world. At one time it was solid. You remember it. Back in 1960 you could take one of these into a bank and buy one of these. Can you today? A silver dollar now costs 20 to 25 dollars depending on its quality. That one dollar piece of paper will not buy it anymore. If a rack if we fail, it's not going to be because we don't give them a democracy. Oh, by the way, you do know that we are not a democracy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Not democracy. A democracy is we the sheeple. A republic is we the people. They want a democracy given to Iraq because they want control by the oil men of the world. And if they do not succeed, the American dollar is going to be worthless. It's not the fact that we don't win. It's the fact that if they don't succeed, they have big, big problems on their hands. Now they're faced with something else. They're faced with Iran, the third largest oil field on the face of the earth. The Bush-Cheney dynasty is literally milking America for everything it's worth. The powers that be have an agenda. They know what they're doing. I heard them talk about a 30-year plan for the Arabs when I was the chaplain on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline, and I have watched them carry out their plans meticulously without one single flaw. Now, before I give the next very startling portion of this lecture, I want to give an example. Uh, you'll very readily recognize this, any of you who are 50 and above, you, you'll easily remember back these days. In 1984, I had a phone call one day. It was from Mr. Ken Fromm. He was back with Atlantic Richfield down in Houston. You know, even the powers that be sometimes are a little proud and haughty, have a good time bragging. And he used to call me up on the phone from time to time, and he'd say, well, Lindsay, this, that, and the other. And this time he called me up on the phone, and he said, Lindsay, are you going to be speaking anywhere around America over the next month or two? I said, yes, Ken. In fact, next week I leave to go to Seattle, Washington, and about two or three months later finally wound up in Southern California with speaking engagements. He said, well, Lindsay, I'd like you to tell your audiences everywhere you go something that is going to kind of put your speech on the map. He was bragging, feeling good that day. And I said, Ken, what do you mean? Now, oil at that time was $32 a barrel. We thought it could never go any higher or the world would go broke. 
And he said, Lindsay, I want you to tell your audiences everywhere you go that crude oil is going to $10 a barrel. I said, Ken, no. No, no. I, I, I said, that, that can't happen. I said, it would break the Arab world. It would break the oil-producing countries of the world. I, I said, the people would rise up against their leaders and against their sheikhs and sheikhs. I said, no, that, that can't happen. You, you can't go to $10 a barrel. Ken said very quietly on the phone, Lindsay, come on now. You sat in our board meetings. You know who tells OPEC what we're going to give them for a barrel of oil. He said, Lindsay, you know who's doing this. He said, now come on, take my word for it. It is going to $10 a barrel. By the way, do you know what the price of gold was back at that time? $800 an ounce. You remember it spiked up to that? The powers that be who had made the Arabs and the other oil-producing countries of the world had said to these wealthy sheikhs and sheikhs and others, they'd said, buy gold. No greater investment in the world than gold. They bought it. They bought it by the train car loads. They lined their swimming pools with it. They bought their Rolls Royces and their gold. They had everything they wanted, and they'd paid seven and eight hundred dollars an ounce for it because they'd been told by the people who I'm going to tell you who they are before I finish my lecture tonight. You're going to be surprised who they are. They'd been told by those people to buy gold, and they did. But you see, it was all a trap. Just like what's happening right now in our economy. Interest only mortgage on your house, it's a trap. On and on and on I could go, it's a trap. They know what they're doing. Taking interest down to 1%, it was a trap. They told the Arabs, buy all this gold, it was a trap. Ken Fromm said, Lindsay, it's going to $10 a barrel. I began telling that to my audiences as I arrived in Washington State. Sometimes the people in the audience would literally start giggling. <laughs> they thought, you're crazy. You know what you're talking about. When it finally happened that it went to 11 didn't quite go to 10 went to $11 a barrel. When it went to $11 a barrel, I thought my telephone was going to ring off the hook. Everybody said, you're a prophet. I said, no, I'm not a prophet. I just know the people who are doing it. You know what the price of gold went to at the same time that oil went to $10, $11 a barrel? You know what it went to? Remember? Went down to $300 an ounce. Who took it there? Same people that are taking it up right now. Why did they take it there? Because they knew that the oil producing countries of the world who had signed on the dotted line, whom they had sold their gold to at seven and eight hundred dollars an ounce, would now have to sell it in order to maintain their economy, and they would have to sell it back to the same people they bought it from for seven and eight hundred dollars an ounce. They would have to sell it back to them in order to be able to put food on the table in their countries. They'd have to sell it back for three hundred dollars an ounce. It was all done by a designed, manipulated plan, planned in advance, and I knew it six months before it happened, because I'd been told so by the senior executive of Atlantic Richfield, who kind of giggled over the phone and said, Chaplin, come on now, you know who's doing this. Someone said to me a while back, Chaplin Williams, don't you think it's time to brush down the cobwebs and start all over again? I said, no. I think it's time to kill the spider. <laughs> the price of gasoline at the gas pump is a form of taxation imposed by them. Who are they? You want to know who really makes some money 
that you're paying at the gas pump? 